This morning, we're going after someone who has one of those insurance apps that allegedly are supposed to lower your rates because it follows your driving. It knows exactly when you brake, you turn hard, you speed. Do they charge you more? Like it backfires on you? You get that in your car and you realize you're a bad driver? That's what I'm afraid of. Oh. Also, they go, oh, instead of saving 100 we're going to charge you an extra Well, one texter Ooh. told us, Kev, that she is a really crazy driver and she still gets her discounts. She goes, I don't still. think they really penalize you. They're just tracking you. <laughs> Ew, weird. <laughs> Maybe they just want the data. Yeah, she's just giving them the data, the data and they're yeah, still giving her the money. discounts and Not she knows she's a nutty driver. I'm looking around the room for ideas on what I could throw at her for bad driving. Someone in here breaks hard and scares easily. I'm looking at Ryan. He's probably like, <laughs> what? Oh! <laughs> that kind of, but the, okay, who's you the jerk grip or whatever? Maybe a, I mean, maybe I'll go, go with jerky driver. I can see Rula as the jerky driver. The as you lane, Rula lane to the lane. weaver. Rula will yeah. get there first because she's going. I don't like going, to stand, <laughs> be behind slow cars. I will like play like a video game on Frogger. West like you and I have gone to events together, and I've actually like, seen no, you like weaving no, in and out. No. And yep. she's like, I'm like, man, this girl's on a mission. But then the red light comes, and then, boom, Same I'm right spot. up along yeah, side of you. <laughs> yes, but I was moving this the whole time. I guess I your idea is that the tortoise slow. better to be going nowhere fast than slow. Totally. totally. <laughs> Everyone has given me some great ideas. And now, uh, Bridget did tell me um, about what's wrong with the app. She's been super annoyed by it, just because any little break, like, it, it, it starts to beep. Okay, so it starts to beep, y'all. That's one of the things that annoys the crap out of people. It's telling you you're being a bad driver. So let's leave that in there, too. Uh, it turns out um, this individual is always on Highway 90. Highway 90. And uh, they live in uh, Crosby here. So let's give her a call about the insurance app. Hello? Yes, good morning, ma'am. I'm calling from in regards to the app. The app that you've been using in order to get a discount? Yes. <laughs> okay, unfortunately, we've seen that you've been shutting it off and it's been uh, possibly acting up. Why are you shutting it off? <laughs> well, because just as you said, it's been acting up. I mean, I think it's just a really sensitive app or something. I mean, I'm driving normally and it's constantly beeping at me. Oh, no. For no reason. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, it might be because you're a bad driver, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a bad driver. Okay. I'm a very responsible driver. Uh, okay. Well, if, uh, if you want to release the app from your account, then we just need to go through the automated system and then we can, we can do that. Okay. <laughs> okay, so. All right. We can do that. Yeah. And so, um, so hold on. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the termination portal. We have gained enough data to release you from the program and lower your rates, okay? Okay. We just have a few pieces of missing info, like, why do you break so hard? I don't break hard. Did you hit anything? No. <laughs> hmm. So, would you consider yourself a jerky driver? No. I'm not a jerky driver. You scare easily? What? No. Are you afraid of other cars? <laughs> no. Are you serious? What has determined that you were going 90 on 90? Were you late to something? I'm, I was not going 90 miles an hour. No. I've never driven 90 miles an hour in my life. The road is called Highway 90. That is not the speed limit, okay? <laughs> yeah, I know. I was not driving 90 miles an hour. Do you hear the app beeping sometimes? Yes, always. How often? All the time. For no reason at all. That means you are being a bad driver. Can you be good? Or better? Oh, are you? Yes, I am a good driver. We have your location as Cosby, like Bill Cosby. Is that correct? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Crosby. Cosby. No, Crosby. With Cosplay. an R. Crosby. Co Cosplay. Oh my no, God. <laughs> Crosby. C-R-O-S-B-Y. Chorchi. What? Do you know where you no, live? No, Crosby. Do you, do you know where you live? Crosby. C-R-O-S-B-Y. Oh we have raised your rates due to ignorance. Thank you for using <laughs> Have a good what? day. Hello? 
Hello? Oh, my. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Sorry that you were disconnected from the system due to uh, ignorance, I guess. Uh-oh. No. Can you please, can I talk to, like, another manager or something? Yeah. I don't know what the system is. Well, it's, it's my... I don't know either. It's my first day. <laughs> well, then I need oh to speak God. with somebody else who knows how to use this because they should not be raising my rates. This app is not working correctly. Oh, uh, okay. Well, maybe Bridget can fix it. What? Um, your sister has set you up this morning. My name is Special K. I'm from KRBE, the Rula and Ryan show. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? <laughs> Bridget! <laughs> what in the world? I am I'm not. Kill her. I'm not. Oh my God! From your insurance company, I'm not going to cut off your app or your insurance. But your sister thought it would be fun to mess with you. Oh my God! I'm gonna kill her, and now I have to still call the insurance company. <laughs> Jeez! <laughs> Listen, I will not mess with you any longer. I won't keep you any longer. But you, could you say these words for me? Could you say "Special K pranked me on the Rula and Ryan show"? Special K pranked me on the Rula and Ryan show. Uh-huh. In Crosby, oh. damn it! Oh, nice. Nice. Not Crosby. <laughs> Go to krbe.com if you want right. to get on the list uh, to prank somebody. Uh, by the way, somebody said, "Oh, lol, I'm listening as I'm driving 90 on 90." Uh, uh-huh. uh, coming up next, closure. You go to krbe.com to get connected with Eric, so you can find the person that has ghosted you or you've lost touch with. We're gonna reunite two people next on the Rule and Ryan show. My friend is what they call closure. Yes, yep. they do. They were that in your life. Closure. Then they weren't. Go to krbe.com. Eric will contact you back and uh, try and figure out what's going on with the person you've lost touch with. Whether they blocked you on socials or you've just lost touch with them and can't find them at all. He does his best to find everybody that contacts him, but he can't find everybody. Sometimes. He's not the FBI. It helps if they have family. Yeah. In the area. the family will give me the, the number. Mm-hmm. Trina reached out. Let's get her full story. Good morning, Trina. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Trina. So who is it you're seeking closure from? Well, my brother Kenny went out with my friend Amy recently, and since they had a date, she has not returned any of his calls. She's been ghosting him. She hasn't returned any of my calls, and she actually oh. blocked him. Oh, she ghosted y'all both. Wow. She ghosted y'all both. Wait, how many dates? Just one? Just one. So I'm trying to get some closure for my little brother, Kenny. How in the world did this happen? Because if you're friends with somebody, it's kind of uh, going out there on a limb to introduce them to a sibling. It's always risky. Yeah, totally. I went to college with Amy, and she's always thought my little brother, Kenny, was cute. So she messaged me. She was like, look, I'm single again. Would it be okay for you to hook Kenny and me up? And he was so excited about her. He's always had a little thing for her. And they went on a date 10 days ago, and she just ghosted him. So I honestly don't know what happened. You're telling me your brother that you're so close who didn't say, I don't know what happened, Trina. I mean, I took her out to dinner. We went to XYZ Place to eat. Everything seemed fine with the conversation. He told me nothing weird happened. He told me that, like, she even went back to his place. And I don't know what happened, but hopefully you guys can help me figure it out. Amy is here, Trina, and she's heard what you said. It's not Kenny that is asking her for closure. It is Sister Trina who wants to stand up for her. Now I know she's still there because I didn't tell her you're going to be on with us. I just told her somebody wanted to talk to you. Oh, really? Usually on closure, we have them hear it so they can give us their two cents. But I didn't tell her who it was, though. Let's get them on. Amy, (laughs) are you there? Amy, Amy, can you hear me? It's Rula. Hi. Hi, Trina. Hey. Yeah, I'm like, oh, no. (laughs) Well, you heard all that. Can you shed some light? Like, what happened? Why'd you ghost her baby brother? (sighs) You know, I was excited to go on this date with him. And so he plans it out. And when we get to the date, the whole day he's leading me on, like, be ready at 7 o'clock. I'm going to come pick you up. And then, like, an hour before, he pulls a fast one, like, you know what? Never mind. Just meet me there. So we're at the restaurant, and I don't know if he chugged a pot of coffee or what, but he was just super hyper. Okay. Talk nonstop the whole time. So you guys are at the restaurant, but Trina told us that you went back to his place. The restaurant was okay, so, you know, I just felt like, okay, maybe he was nervous here. I'm going to cut him a break. I know him. It's not like I'm going to a stranger's house. 
And I think that's where it went super wrong because when I got there, it was like a tornado hitting there. Oh, what do you mean? It was so messy. I was like, wow. Like, you know, you knew you're going to invite me over, like at least clean up. Kenny is messy. He has been since he's a kid. Yeah. Yeah, but if you know somebody's coming over, you're going to have company, especially if he's been, like, really wanting to be with this girl. Wouldn't you clean up a little bit? Or what if he did clean up? That's his version of clean? It was so bad that <sighs> he thought he cleaned it up. Like, oh, maybe there's no. no sinks, but he forgot to clean, like, yeah, the stuff yeah. on the toilet. Ew, yeah, yeah, gross. Yeah. So you get there. The place is a dump. What happens? I honestly wanted to start cleaning. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> I was like, oh, gosh. So then we're sitting. I'm like, okay, Netflix and chill. Put a little movie on. Wait, chill was an option? Well, here's the thing. Before we got to the chill part, he took his shoes off. And woo, I tell you what. The moment I smelt the odor. Oh, man. Coming from his feet. (laughs) I knew it was his feet. Oh, God, that's the worst. And I was like, oh, my gosh. What's this? Odor. I think grown ups got bad feet. I thought that was something you'd get like when you were just a kid. No, definitely. Like especially man sweat foot smell. Ew. I never. I guess <laughs> oh I must have been lucky. So I was putting my chapstick on and like trying to just smell it the whole time. Like smell my upper lip. Like okay, maybe I'll block it off. And <laughs> oh my god. Maybe I could just like not breathe, you know, and turn the other way. Wait. So are you telling me the only reason you're ghosting my brother is because he has stinky feet? <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh, that sounds horrible. It does sound so, bad. So, no, the not being a man of his word when he said he was going to come pick me up, obviously, that was a big deal for me. And, you know, when we got back to his apartment, he just was like, Mr. Hansy has no boundaries. Mr. Hansy, he tried to make moves? Oh, yeah. Well, that's usually, unless he has a puppet named <laughs> yeah, that. A puppet show. <laughs> unless he has a puppet named he Mr. Hansy. fart sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he has like a whole puppet set up there. Amy, did you feel like you couldn't tell Trina because she might make you feel bad for not wanting to go out with her brother again? Or do you feel like it changes your relationship and you just wanted to wash your hands of everybody? Yeah, why'd you do it? I didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings. So I just kind of ghosted. Mm. And I'm sure telling the millions of people today. <laughs> that Kenny's got stinky feet. In your defense, though, you did not know this was going to happen. Yeah. Why weren't you answering Trina's calls, though? That's what I don't understand. Thank you. I think I just wanted to let the fire die down for a little bit. And I didn't really know what to say. So I just felt really uncomfortable. I actually had a lot of anxiety about it because it's to ruin our friendship. Trina, do you feel that any of these are valid points, you know, that your brother could be sloppy? And... Have you noticed his, your brother's feet stink? No. <laughs> <laughs> does he wear socks? With, does he wear shoes without socks often? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, Amy, you and I have known each other since college. We've been friends a long time. And I know my brother. To be honest, I thought you knew my brother since you were asking to go out with him. But, yeah, he can be hyper. And, yeah, he can be a slob. But he's also one of the best guys I know. And if you don't want to be with my brother, then, you know, you should just tell him and let him know that these are the reasons because that's how he learns. And even if you don't think that you're a good fit, the least you can do is just tell him and say exactly what you told millions of strangers out there on the radio now because it's just not right to ghost an old friend and somebody you went on a date with. So it's easier to tell millions of strangers than telling somebody their face. I don't, I don't <laughs> tell yeah, on but the phone. Well, no Ghosting isn't right. You know, it really isn't. And he, he sounds like a puppy dog. you got to train him. He'll learn. Or just text. I would, I would have just texted and said, sorry, man. Yeah, Amy, to Trina's point, because you guys have a friendship, I could see how yeah. it's extra hurtful for her. I think to the average person listening who went on one date with somebody, it is no skin off their back to ghost because they're like, listen, this is not for me, and I don't even care enough about him to tell him. So basically, it's not about his looks. His looks are on point. The yeah. feet and behavior and sloppiness. Yeah. Handsiness. But he can change those things. Like but looks. She doesn't like, like I, him enough I can't, to stick around I can't be that. good looking. I could, other things I could change, but I can't change my looks. Well, personality can be changed. That's for sure. Can it? Yeah, I don't know if it What's can. that phrase about the leopard and the spots? Yeah. The leopard can't change its spots. Well, thanks a lot for um, having the conversation, Amy and Trina. Thanks for listening to our show and reaching out. Y'all have a great day. Best of luck to you Love guys. Love the show. Thank, Thank you. y'all. Thank okay, you. Guys, bye. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Speaking of stinky feet, yeah, yesterday we did try it Tuesday, and Eric, you had that glove that's supposed to peel a potato. Which was a fail. It did had, not peel the potato. I think we were doing it wrong. It's supposed to be underwater, like uh-huh. the, the faucet. Running. Oh. Running while you rub the potato with these gloves. I got for eight bucks on Amazon. They're supposed to 
uh, peel the potatoes. If you need a shoulder to... exercise, yeah. get these gloves and try and rub these potatoes. Well, it well it your shoulders. Get some of this skin off. And remember then... gloves with it. It's got like molded, uh, like like little. It's it's very like that? a coarse little... texture to the gloves. More than sandpaper. It, yeah, it's like, like real bumps. bumpy. So then I tried. If you go to KRBE. Uh, oh, God. You can see it right there on Instagram. And there's video. potatoes I'm all over the I'm incredibly ticklish on my feet. So Eric came over because, I, I, you know. I, Ryan wanted to give rid of some dead skin, so I said, I'll yeah, try I, it. I run a lot of good <laughs> calluses. Eric, you went to town on my feet a little too much. Your laugh is hilarious. I just, I'm so ticklish. And when I got home, I totally forgotten about it because this is hours later. I take my shoe off and I'm like, I smell yeah. potato. <laughs> Yeah, because the potato was, <laughs> the potato the was, was stuck I in the glove potato parts. fragments on my That's foot. so gross. And you left those gloves over there unwashed and just sitting there. That is I'm disgusting. just going to throw them away. My yes. wife's like, you're not returning those. Just, it's $8. Disgusting. Just throw it away. Just throw them away. Because you touched my feet with them? I think you. All of it. Most likely. Oh, she doesn't want me to put that yeah. in my vehicle. Yeah, barefoot was, was on those hygiene. gloves. Gross and gross. It could my own feet, right? It does, no. but didn't, it's not yeah. against you. It's no. just feet. You just didn't let up. You were relentless. I was like, stop. Why'd you start laughing? Stop. stop. You, I was going to You know pee. you're tickling someone and they're laughing like that? You just want to keep doing it. KRVE.com if you would like <laughs> to he's um, pee his pants. follow us on socials. You could see all the chaos from that. Uh, coming up next in Celebrity Scoop, you know, I almost, when I saw this story about what this celebrity sold at auction, I'm thinking any woman who has a man that she doesn't fear will ever leave her for another woman, she will, He. she fears he will buy a Porsche or buy something really expensive that he wants to, quote, collect. Yep. This is a story that's going to fuel that man. Hmm. I told you it's going to be worth something. I told you when you find out what this celebrity had and how much this celebrity sold it for after he bought it. We'll have to get to it next on The Rule and Ryan Show. I'm very proud to present Rule and Ryan's Celebrity Scoop on 104.1 KRBE. All right, let me just start this out with there are a lot of things on Instagram that you send to your mate or your friends. I'm like, oh, this is... I feel this quote or I feel this thing. Mm -hmm. My husband always sends me the one that says, I'm not one of those women that thinks my husband will run off with someone one day. I'm the woman who doesn't want my husband to try and buy a Porsche or some classic car or something <laughs> that he thinks is going to be worth something one day. And uh, Sylvester Stallone has made the news today because he is a watch collector. My husband also likes watches, as Eric knows. Yeah. My husband loves watches. And in one uh, charity event he is selling 11 of his collective watches his collectors um Whoa. think about it, 11 of them he's probably got like 20 others that, that he wants to keep that is 11 insane. of them 11 the most impression impressive one y'all get this is a patek philippe grandmaster chime i think i heard my husband just uh, not get the chills how <laughs> much does that cost um, a Sylvester Stallone bought it for two and a half million dollars. Oh my God! Never once wore it. Oh. Had to actually convince Patek Philippe to sell it to him. Never once sold, t um, put it, put it on his wrist. Has kept it the way he got it, and it could get over five million dollars oh. in the charity it for an investment. Right. So let me ask One you One of these something. same um, kinds of watches from Patek Philippe sold for $31 million oh my at God. a charity auction. And Sylvester Stallone said, I was never going to covet and keep it forever. It's just not my personality. I tend to enjoy things and then I like to share them. So well, he didn't enjoy it. He does consider it a work of art. It's the most complicated wristwatch ever made. And he actually had to appeal to Patek Philippe to have the right to purchase it. So that plus 10 other watches are going up for sale to instantly make him a multimillionaire again. If he wore Goodness. it, I think it'd be worth it. Even more. Yeah. Oh, Did this was on, it on Sly's wrist yes. at one point. Sly's yeah. alone. I would think so. Like you see a photo of him wearing Absolutely. it one, just once on the red carpet. Yes. Or if yes. he wore it in a movie. Good point, Eric. Oh, my yeah. God. He this was one in that movie. He should have worn it. Good point. But he Rula, should have worn it. I'm totally ignorant to... Uh, you can stop there. Uh -huh. <laughs> to why why these watches cost so much money? Like, what is the big deal about them? Like, it's is just the way they're made. Something mm -hmm. about the way they're made. Who's the other big watch guy? It's a um, celebrity that's crazy there's about watches. There. Like, there's like I know Jane Leno in his cars and Jerry Seinfeld in his cars. I can't remember right now. I'm having a brain fart on who is the celebrity that's nuts for these watches. They just spend millions of dollars on watch collections. So many people. A lot. A lot of people. Um, okay, so over the years, we have been big supporters of Texas Children's Hospital. Now, last Christmas and the Christmas before that, you heard us broadcasting live from Texas Children's, and one of our favorite people to talk to is Adair and Bailey. 
Bailey is one of the many golden retrievers they have that has been specially trained for different parts of the hospital to help children with what they're going through. They have one that's specially trained for transplants. Bailey is the transplant specialty. Then they've got one for cancer. They've got one for all these different things. Bailey is going to visit us next week because Bailey is retiring. She needs Bailey the golden retriever. She made so many, uh, she made such an impact on so many people. She has, she was actually there at for child's. many children's last moments, yeah. many children's last yeah. moments, like they the requested child was Bailey not to hold conscious. their like hold the she paw hold of Bailey. Paw. Yes. Hold paw. So Bailey was 18 months old when she joined um, three-year-old Elsa in the Texas Children's Positive Play Program. That was back in 2018, and here we are now in 2024. And Bailey is going to be retired out, and they're replacing Bailey with another dog that has been trained. And we got to know Adair over the last couple of years. She's going to be here next week, so we can talk about the Positive Play Program and. And um, in 2024, Ambassadors for Texas Children's Hospital funds will be de- dedicated to funding the longevity of the Positive Play program. The Ambassadors for Texas Children's Hospital is a donor group for philanthropists who help support the hospital's vision through annual or lifetime financial contributions. Like when we were broadcasting live, we asked you to do like donors. a monthly location, mm-hmm. I mean, monthly donation, 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 or, you know, you can do it every single month. Um, now, of course, they want you to raise funds and help us with the awareness for children's and women's health by joining this special group in Houston. Send the Woodlands or Austin. You can learn more by going to texaschildrens.org slash ambassadors. The Positive Play program is a fantastic. You can follow that on Instagram. Positive, P-A-W, like the paw. Mm-hmm. Positive pit Play program. And last night, it was a night right. with legends. With and David. actually, and next week, mm-hmm. we're gonna when we have them on, uh-huh. okay, we're going to do something special we're working on right now. Mm-hmm. I'll know. I'll be able to tell you more later this week. But, uh, you know, we're going to, in honor of Bailey, we're going to try and raise lots of funds during the that whole day to get her day, a replacement. Just it's expensive to yeah. train these right. dogs and stuff, and they could always use money. So, in honor of Bailey retiring, we're going to try and raise a lot of funds for Texas Children's uh, next week. It's I'll give you more details. We got to just work a few <sighs> more things out today. Yeah, but I just want to let you know. So, if if you want to donate. Next week will be the big time. Please. Hold on to your wallets. I was just going to yep. say, I was Until just going to text you. a deer and tell her, like, hey, we're talking about y'all right now on uh, the Real and Ride Show. Just texted me. I'm crying in my car on the way to work listening to y'all talk about Bailey. Oh, I know. Yeah. She's so Adair. sweet. We love you. We love Bailey. And what we learned is oh that Adair's going to be her forever mama. Bailey is yes. her forever dog. Yeah. That's so but now she's um, going to train with another one. She'll yes. have another pup that she's right. going to train. And if you've not seen this before, mm. you just have, I mean, you can just go to their Instagram, Positive Play, P A W. S I T I V E positive. They always use money, so next week we're gonna Have ask you guys day. to really help us out. Next they week. really are the most amazing hospital I've ever seen. Last night I went to a fundraiser for Texas Children's. It was an evening with David Foster and Catherine McPhee. Immediately, Eric, I was thinking about you because he oh, has he's... written so many hits, and so many of them are ones that you love. Oh yeah, he... I mean, he, like... he has a really great thing on Netflix. I talked about a he's couple awesome. of years ago. It's a just look up David Foster on Netflix, and it talks about his entire career, how he really is. Gifted. I mean, it is a talent you are born with for him to know what he knows about music and what makes a hit. He is the reason we have Michael Bublé. He is the reason we have Celine oh, yeah. Dion. He is the reason we have so many. He is the reason Whitney Houston sang Dolly Parton's song the way she sang I will always it love you. Yeah. In The Bodyguard. It's a pretty fantastic And he talked about all this last night. So they did this performance, and uh, Catherine McPhee was amazing. His wife? Uh, that's his wife, and they had been friends for many, many years. Well, they met on American Idol. Yep. Let's not let's not be silly yeah. about that. They, everyone talks about that. They have a huge he talks age about gap. How, they met on American Idol when she was a contestant, and he was the mentor. But he talks about how, like, you know, I went to Catherine's wedding, and then she turns around and she goes, yeah, I went to a couple of David's weddings <laughs> <laughs> before they ended up getting together. But uh, they brought out, like, a guy named Matt Mauser, and he was on America's Got Talent. He was on for like six rounds. Amazing. Sounds like Frank Sinatra. Now, he had an interesting story. His wife was his manager. They had just had three young babies at home. And her goal, her lifelong dream was to coach a child's basketball team. So she was doing something with Kobe Bryant. And she was on that helicopter with Kobe Bryant when it went down. She lost her life. Oh, I was going to say, was, I thought everybody passed away on that helicopter. Okay, she did. Yeah, she yeah. did. So here he is, and he's making, like, you know, some of his first appearances out, and he came up on stage and sang, and it was just absolutely beautiful, amazing. But what was really just grabbed my heart was 
um, a young lady came up on stage, and she was one of the patients who was not even supposed to be alive. And Texas Children saved her life, and she did Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Oh. It was just so beautiful. I mean, I have it on my phone. I can, I can hit it, but it's not going to sound very good the, through the mic. The fundraiser was specifically last night was benefiting um, the Cancer and Hematology Center yes. for Texas Children's because they have so many different facets to that hospital. Yeah, so much. I mean, you've got the transplant department, cardiology, you've got the hematology, all, all these things. So every Every single department needs different fundraising. Like we said, Positive Play needs fundraising. All these are so they do different fundraisers all throughout the year. This one last night was at the um, Post Oak Hotel. It was, and I was with just, David Foster. I was just so proud to be there because you're in a room with people, these brilliant doctors, these people that are changing lives. And I just want to say thank you to my fiance. She, um, you know, invited me there, got a table, and just all the generosity. These people are amazing to go to these fundraisers. They raise millions of dollars and. It's just I, it's I'm good looking to see forward. rich people putting their money to yeah. good use. You know, exactly. I'm sure it's selfish rich people. It's nice to see people take it's their very money. Very giving people. I mean, really, if you think it. about it, every single hospital in this city, because we are one of the best medical centers in the world, every single one of them has fundraisers because they need the funds to keep going. And there are a lot of wealthy people in Houston who open their wallets. A lot. Yeah. And you don't see them because you're not running in that circle. And we could probably say a million things about, oh, look at that person in the socialite page. Guess what? If that socialite page didn't exist, we wouldn't have these donations for these massive programs. It is true. Because I have been invited to one for a different hospital before, and it stuns me how much money people have to just drop on stuff. And they really save their money or they, they, they dog ear their money for certain things that are really close to their hearts. And I have been to an event before where somebody was like, okay, I'll open the bidding at $50,000. And you're like, oh, my God. They were doing that last night. You just night. did $50,000. Somebody did $100,000 last <laughs> night. I was like, oh, my God. It's yeah, just, so, you know, there's uh, a lot of Thank you to everybody who is somebody who attends one of these events and actually opens your wallet in a, in a giant way. Every little dollar helps for every single event. So we thank you if you've ever donated to anything. But definitely when it comes to Texas Children's, uh, we can't wait to see what we're going to do next week with Bailey. Next week we'll tell I'm you so all about, excited about that. retirement. A whole oh, day Bailey. in honor of Bailey. Yay. <laughs> The Rula and Ryan Show on KRBE with What's Going Down, 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 down. in h okay. First story is for you, Rula. You're the mama bear here, and oh, I just you. know that this is going to drive you nuts. Paraland police, not in a bad way, I mean, but Paraland police are asking high school students, please be careful. They're playing a game called Senior Assassin. Oh, God. And this is a game involving oh, toy guns. It's popular on social because media. Because that sounds like a good title. Uh -oh. So they're high school seniors, and it's a survival contest where students try to eliminate targets off campus by using toy guns. And often the toy gun of choice is the Orbeez gun, which shoots Orbeez squishy beads that expand with water. And they're hitting cars with it. And it's just dangerous to be playing. It's just dangerous to pull a gun out and point at anybody. And if they don't know, right. especially yeah. in Texas. They're saying, uh, according and does to an witnesses, does an Orbeez gun look like a fake real gun? That's just it. If or is you, it like neon if green? If you're driving and, like and an you see somebody shooting gun. something, you're going to have a heart attack. Right. I mean, it's so scary. I mean, if you felt one, you'd know it's not a real gun. We had no. those when we were playing paintball, and they're light. But yeah, I mean, yeah, but you can't tell right. not when somebody, you're driving down the road. Somebody pulls a gun out. That's There's scary not, stuff. Not in this state. Speaking of age. our roads, Texas has more miles of road than any other state in America. Seven hundred and one thousand miles. We drive an estimated five hundred and forty million miles per day. This is according to TxDOT, and that is enough to circle the Earth nearly a hundred times every minute. Now, TxDOT is working on its long-range plan, taking into account construction and maintenance and developing uh, from next year all the way to 2046. It's going to cost $740 billion. $740 billion to work on our roads. Oh, and by the way, here's something fun that's going to happen. Uh, you're soon going to be able to pay with just the palm of your hand at Whole Foods. Jeff Bezos has announced they have a new system called Amazon One. I saw that yeah, two days ago. I was yeah. like, what is this thing? It's, it's going to let up. customers just instead of, you know, your palm print will be associated with your credit card. So you just walk up to kiosk, put your palm out, and you've paid for your food. Isn't that cool? I can't wait to do this with Very cars. Mm -hmm. I'm sick of carrying keys. Well, you don't really know you can use your them, phone and stuff. You? Just, just wave your hand in front of the car. Yeah, can't you just walk up to your car's remote entry? Yeah, but you still have that key. You have to have the key fob in your you pocket leave. for the door to open up. Mine doesn't automatically unlock. I have to legit like My unlock first it. car had two keys. One to oh. open. Oh, unlock. Yeah, yeah. One did. Yeah, the yeah. door handle key yeah. and the oh starter gosh. key. It was a 1986 <laughs> Ford Topaz. Oh, God. I was oh, we've come a long way. Now we're basically just driving a giant computer. That's all we are. I don't use almost any of the features. I don't use any of them. I'm just like, okay, where's the AC? Well, it is hard to 
you know, you, if you do get a new car, talk to them and tell them, how do I turn on FM radio? <laughs> yes, it's important Seriously. to know it's because really... they're so complex. And you, I mean, I'm a lot of these people don't my know daughter, how to do it. I'm like, where the hell is the FM? They're making it harder and harder. It Find should be it. really easy just to push it there. So We are still the most listened to yeah, but form if, that there is. But if this stuff keeps happening, I don't want to you know, have less people. I want more people listening. Absolutely. Good point, Eric. More people need to hear Eric get mad when he loses rapid fire quiz. No, it's not going to happen today. <laughs> the rapid fire <laughs> quiz is coming up next. We have a Mom's Day package for you, a Mother's Day dinner, and a facial from Sugarland Med Spa. If you would Should like to win moms? this for the mom in five, your life. Five moms a bod? Or do we ask people who want to win want for their moms? Or do we want people to win for their moms? What do you guys think? It could think? be either or. I think that they can win it for their moms. I just feel like might, maybe a mom wants to win their own prize. Or huh? your watch. Did it just, your watch is so sensitive. Your, your watch. Yeah. I mean, anytime we're talking, it you just turns on. Thing. Anyone know how to fix your watch? How to fix watch. Urban needs to work at Apple. You've actually the last called three people. days, my watch. Y'all, we were talking about a three number that you call for emergencies, those three numbers. Mm -hmm. And it called those three numbers during the commercial break. And they called me back wondering if I had an emergency. Yeah. I don't know what's mm -hmm. going on. There must be a the, setting It's on a your high watch. sensitivity. I didn't that. feel like I changed anything in the last three months. But anyway, 713-390-KRBE is our phone number. Anybody uh, could call five in. Five contestants for the Rapid Fire Quiz. You, you pair up with one of us that you hope wins this for you for Mother's Day. Next on The Rule and Ryan Show.